One more collection Drew is keen to see. He's making the long drive from Clandidnoe right across the country to Dis in Norfolk to visit a legend of the antiques trade. We are off to see a very nice man, but also a very well-respected antique dealer, Robert Barley has a very individual eye and does that rare thing of buying exactly what he likes with not a second thought to what anybody else thinks. Drew's got privileged access into Robert's house to see his own personal collection of antiques. But what I promise you, it will be a very, very random and different mix, whatever we buy. That's, that's for sure. The ancient market town of Dis is set around the edge of a large and extremely deep lake. Nearby, an accumulation of quirky items is overflowing from the home of Robert Barley, a man widely regarded as antiques royalty. As well as being a dealer, Robert has been a lifelong collector. This will be a rare opportunity to browse through the assortment of pieces that are closest to his heart and are not generally for sale. It's the object and it's the history of the object which appeals to me more than anything. I'm not really a businessman who's been in this to make money. I buy and sell things which I enjoy. I only buy things which I personally like. Robert. Hello! Hello, mate. Nice to see you. Hello, how are you Hello. doing? Hello, how do you yeah. do? Marvellous. This, oh, this is tea, Robert, tea. Oh. Come on in. Can have a look inside? Do come true. So, what have we got in here, then? So, God, well, oh, it's lovely. Some of this stuff has been sitting around, not being shown for 20 years. First time I've been into Robert's home, walk into the dining room, and it's... It reminds me a little bit of my house. It's, uh, you can tell you, you, there's a certain edge to an antique dealer's home. They have a, a natural way of throwing things together that look great. It's warm, homely, and there's stuff in here that I absolutely adore. Robert is such a prolific buyer that he's filled his entire house and has invited Drew in to dispose of some of his collection and make room for new things. It's not rude as a dealer to dealer to say, how much is that? No, it's not. Okay. Um, the, um, the bust here is absolutely beautiful. There's a little bit, tiny bit of nicking on the ear. That can be 750. OK. Nowhere left for me to go on that one, I'm afraid. No, I, uh, there probably isn't. The two um, obelisk. Are they period ones? I, I don't imagine they will be. I, I imagine they're probably not. No? Um, I think they're not. There's... There's a pair of uh, fossil marble obelisks of sort of quite a decent size. So I've not seen any in that sort of brown, muddy colour, which usually doesn't sell very well. But I think with a, a, a clean and some polish over those, they look really different. And the colourway's good, actually. It's different. The matching pair of obelisks are made of a marble that has hundreds of small creatures fossilised within the stone. The objects themselves are potentially Victorian and could be worth around £300. Are oh, they? They're fossilised things. And um, those could be 100 the pair. 100 the pair? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I'll have those. Just they're so nice, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Some wax or a bit of cleaning up. Yeah, yeah. Great. They, they look beautiful. The obelisks are very much the English country house aesthetic. The natural history was very much part of that. They would have tables set out with different uh, fossilised remains, and it was to show that they've travelled and they understand this and they're very ahead of the game. It's very much part of that look, of that ethos, of that interior. My, oh, I love this The room. living room. Look at that. That's fabulous. Yeah, it's a bit... Uh... That's chaotic. Lovely. We've now come into the sitting room, which is just gorgeous. Just want to pick the whole room up. It's so lovely. Again, typical antique dealer's uh, living room full of squidgy old armchairs and fireplaces and bits of this, that and the other. It's just lovely. It's so comfortable. As usual with me, Robert, there's something that I can't have immediately that chair. The chair? Yeah. The chair's lovely. Um, it's all needlework. It's, it's, it's in a very shabby condition, yeah. as you can yeah, see. Yeah. It needs a bit of TLC. Well, yeah. It needs sort of conserving, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, it's a 19th century one, not 19th century. First thing I see is an upholstered, well, carpet and red velvet upholstered armchair. Lovely, really good shape. All in all, a very good English tapestry armchair with some red velvet on it. Lovely thing. The armchair is upholstered in tapestry, showing a floral design and edged in very worn red velvet, which has also been used to cover the frame. With a tasseled fringe along the bottom of the seat, the late 19th century piece could be worth around £1,000. It's a nice lived-in chair. Mm. Anything with velvet or needle point on, I really like. Yeah, that is 650. is 
salvage entrepreneur Drew Pritchard has been given a rare invitation to the home of antiques luminary Robert Barley to browse through his collection of thousands of rare pieces. And he's fallen for a very warm tapestry chair, which Robert has had for 20 years. It's had a repair on there. Uh, five and a half? Good, good, good. Sorry, mate. I think I probably just bought your chair, haven't I? It no, well, I mean, they very rarely sleep on that one. <laughs> the chair looks really beaten up. It looks terrible, doesn't it? It's not that bad. If we can get that upholstery and the tapestry and the silk clean and the velvet clean, it will fly out. It's definitely got the look I'm after at the moment. A really nice country house piece. Robert's collection is full of unusual one-off pieces. And this, this is great. Johnny Rice, isn't he? It's a lovely puppy. We had Better to there, redo yeah. the leather there uh, because it had perished. It's a nice puppet, and I want 200 for him. Oh, God, don't make that so viable. It's strange, because what I like about it is what's missing, which is probably the rest of the puppets. Imagine what they were. There was probably several skeletons. You can imagine them all dancing, you know, in a big sort of puppeteers and candles going off and children screaming. <laughs> That's what I like about it. There would have been a whole set of these things, and they would have been doing crazy stuff. The skeleton has been a character in puppet theatre all over the world for hundreds of years. This carved wooden papier-mâché puppet, which probably dates from the 19th century, could be worth around £400. Oh, why did you say that? <laughs> been on the same diet as me. I have to have it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. OK. <laughs> I should miss him. It's just a bit of fun. And it's got a nice bit of age to it, too. Two hundred pounds, probably all its money. I might make fifty quid, but it's it's fun and it's interesting and it's different, uh, and it's highly original. Bar some small repairs that Robert's done, which you could never tell. Um, so I'm happy with that purchase. Wonderful. I just absolutely love your buying. Yeah. It's just a wonderful, wonderful mix of objects. Uh, it's a jolly nice thing. Yeah. That's eighty quid. That one. I love the painting of the girl. It's so I know. Is odd. It? I know, I know. It should be upstairs. I've got a doll which matches it. But it's just slightly... Menacing child. It's slightly sinister. Um, I like that. But I, I, I adore it. I've just I, I bought that not long ago. So, not for sale? This it is. Ah, excellent. Um, I want three, three, 300 There's a real dealer there, isn't there? The unframed picture of a little girl is oil on canvas. Signed A. Weston and dated 1949, it could be worth around £300. The um, young girl painting, what can I say? I'm glad she's not my daughter. Terrifying. What, you know, that, that child looks like, it's like, just strangled the puppy. You know, it's got that sort of menacing look about it, and it's also very well put together. It's a very nice composition. To make the most of the bargain, Drew's going for a joint deal on the painting together with the small brass vets plaque. And you said £80 for the little surgeon thing. For this? Yeah. yeah. Nicely done. Would have been on a big box where, you know, he probably carried it around, you know, cows in labour, all that James Harriet stuff. But it's a 19th century one, and looking at it, I think it's an early 19th century one as well. So a nice piece, a fun piece. Can we do 350 the pair? <laughs> OK. Yeah. Sold. Wonderful. Thank She's you. so menacing. <laughs> now that Drew's been right round the house, it's time to look in the garden. Robert's collection is so vast that he's had to set up extra storage for overflow in a couple of large shipping containers. Nothing. The only thing that I do does take my fancy is the old, the old gentle over there. Yeah, he can be nine hundred pounds. One thing we're walking around, and I can't take my, my eyes off it, is a huge plaster statue over there. Now, I think it's of Moses. It's 20th century, early, and it's not particularly rare, but there wouldn't have been many produced in that size. The two-metre-high plaster statue has been overpainted at some stage in its life, and there is also some damage. Despite all that, it could be worth around £2,000. Is it Moses? I don't who is know it? Who it is. I'm not sure who it is. It's not too bad, is it? No, it's just great, isn't it? Yeah. See, I'm apologising in advance. Okay. Um, I'd like to buy that, please, Robert. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I'll go in the van. Hello, yeah. <laughs> it should do. <laughs>
don't know who it is. I think it's Moses, isn't it? It might be Moses, yeah. It looks, it looks Could good. be Colonel Sanders. I mean, who knows? Yeah. And I thought, he's going to ask about two grand for this. So I thought, well, maybe if I can get it for anywhere just under that, I'd be, you know, happily buy it. £900. Fine. Taking that home. It's big. It's unusual. It's got a great look about it. Um, and it's different. It's time to see if that enormous figure of Moses fits in the van. Today was really enjoyable. Um, it's lovely to be invited into another dealer's home, especially such a well-respected one. Best buy of the day and the thing that's going to spend the most money for us very, very quickly with zero restoration whatsoever is the large plaster cast statue of Moses. One of my favourite buys was the tapestry armchair with the, all the red velvet and silk all over it. Great looking, great shape, nice and original, never been touched by one repair. Fun item today, the puppet, couldn't resist it, 200 quid for a great piece like that, very original. Lots of fun. Robert, I would say, is somebody that I would always be looking up to in the trade. Today was wonderful. It was an absolute delight uh, to do business in that way. It's the following day when they finally make it back to HQ. Speak to Robert Barley. Oh, how is he? He's lovely. To be invited into an antique dealer's house is a real privilege. Look at that. Oh. So it's a papier-mâché and wood carved. Oh, I love it. Isn't it fabulous? It's like Carl's passport for one. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely to have quirky items like the puppet. If you just sort of splatter those across our website, it just changes the whole look, and it shows that, OK, we're serious, we're in business. But we also like a giggle. So another velvet um, armchair, velvet and tapestry covered armchair, nineteenth century. Yeah. The colours are glorious, mixed with a little bit of sort of grime that we're hoping we can sort of lift out. But yeah, really good looking. This is great. Wow. G Gav, don't take a chance with it, okay? Watch the head on there. Watch the head. There's lovely sort of faded colouring paint marks on his sort of robes, but it's fantastic. Statuary currently is really good for the business. I mean, years ago, you wouldn't dream of putting a statue in your house. They sort of shouted, oh, bottom of my garden. But no, statues now have pride of place in people's houses. The armchair from Robert Barley goes straight to Craig for a spot of TLC. After flipping it over to revitalise the padding and springs, he puts a brand new piece of Hessian fabric underneath. We've got the seat built up again now. We've replaced this piece that was all ripped, uh, sewn the cord on that had fallen off. Using a curved needle and wax thread, he sews the cord under the seat back into place. A quick blast of steam lifts the dirt and grease from the arms, bringing out the original vibrant colour of the tapestry. That's all right. Yeah, ready for its new home. And it works like magic, because the restored chair is snapped up almost immediately by a cool young interior designer in London's Camden Town. The skeleton puppet hanging on a new frame custom made by Carl is just a thing to give a touch of style to a celebrity chef's new venture in Singapore. Drew's hunch about the rarity value of the blue super shell petrol globe from World of Country Life pays off. Worth 25% more than an ordinary white one, it zooms off the shelves. With enough bronze letters to spell boy and son, among other useful words, they sell as a single lot. And an antiques enthusiast in East London takes an instant fancy to the brass vet's plaque to set off her original 1960s.
now come into the sitting room, which is just gorgeous. Just want to pick the whole room up. It's so lovely. Again, it, typical antique dealer's uh, living room full of squidgy old armchairs and fireplaces and bits of this, that and the other. It's just lovely. It's so comfortable. As usual with me, Robert, there's something that I can't immediately... That chair. The chair? Yeah. The chair's lovely. Um, it's all needlework. It's, it's, it's in a very shabby condition, yeah. as you can yeah, see. Yeah. It needs a bit of TLC. Well, yeah. It needs sort of conserving, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, it's a 19th century one, not 19th century. First thing I see is an upholstered... Well, carpet and red velvet upholstered armchair. Lovely, really good shape. All in all, a very good English tapestry armchair with some red velvet on it. Lovely. The armchair is upholstered in tapestry, showing a floral design, and edged in very worn red velvet, which has also been used to cover the frame. With a tasseled fringe along the bottom of the seat, the late 19th century piece could be worth around £1,000. That's a nice lived-in chair. Mm. Anything with velvet or needlepoint on, I really like. Yeah, that is £6.50. Salvage entrepreneur Drew Pritchard has been given a rare invitation to the home of antiques luminary Robert Barley to browse through his collection of thousands of rare pieces. And he's fallen for a very warm tapestry chair, which Robert has had for 20 years. It's had a repair on there. Five and a half? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Happy. Wonderful.